A great deal would happen over the course of the next five years. The known world, as a whole, would go through a period of dissolution and fracture the likes of which hadn't been seen for hundreds of years. Counties in every kingdom began to break free from their parent nations due to disease, famine, and general societal unrest. 21 German states broke away from Greater Germany, for example. In Navarra, it was so severe that its constituent kingdoms broke away and became even larger than it, poised to fight the Pope for a chance of increasing its own position. The Golden Horde, it seemed, was dissolving, at least in the East. In a desperate attempt to survive, hundreds of thousands of Muslims erupted into full-scale revolt across the Khanate. They were most successful in the East, where the Nogai, Rajputana, and the Timurids, under their bloodthirsty Khan, Timur the Lame, tore the Eastern territories to ribbons. Much of the new territories shut themselves off from the Western world, and what lay there in the 1450s was mystery. Ireland had broken free of the Mongol yoke, and Ingloland had pushed them into the Scottish foothills. Toulouse had lost its dominant position in the French region before it could exploit it, leaving Bourgogne to take up that honor. Armenia Khan had seen worse in respects to rebellious vassals, but it would still need time to recover. The same goes for Wallachia, which was in the throes of a great deal of religious violence at the time. The Catholics had grown a considerable deal, and populated most of the Northwest, where the Germans, Croatians, and Avars lived. The Bogomilists, which were mostly Wallachian meanwhile, were converting many of the Greek peoples in the South and East, evening themselves up with the growing Catholics. The Massalians, which were broadly Greek, found their numbers dwindling in Wallachia as scores of them moved to Armenikon, which they considered a kind of truer homeland given its makeup. The worst affected, with no doubt, were the Orthodox Christians, made up of Bulgarians and Serbs, whose conversion efforts had failed, causing them to succeed, forming their own kingdoms of Orthodox Wallachia and Bosnia, violently expelling other religious groups from those territories. Orthodox Wallachia made King Vlad Draculesti their leader. Kral Robert Ben Leonard, meanwhile, began to promote calling every Wallachian subject Romanian in an effort to promote unity and blur ethnic fault lines. But only the Wallachian majority took on the name with any enthusiasm. Among them, it even became an exclusionary mark of pride, apart from the other ethnicities. He also changed the name of his title to Kral, more befitting his broader Romanian culture. Also, Venice broke away in Western Greece, joining a trade league with Austria, seeking to maintain its independence. Meanwhile, Songhay had strengthened its position in Africa during this time, despite finding itself cut off from Europe. Finally, the Papal State was possibly the only realm to gain from the state of affairs. Under Pope Ioannis III, the Papal State had snaked its influence into every new vulnerability it could taking up the Pyrenees once more, as well as a few regions of France, Germany, and the British Isles. The Ha Empire had lost control of its tributary Turkestan, and indeed lost most of its contact with the West once the Golden Horde began to encounter its troubles. Overall, countered in the great powers of this new age are Navarra at the bottom, holding on despite its state of general ruin, the mysterious realm of Vijayanagar, a Hindu splinter kingdom from the Golden Horde, Germany, the Papal State, Wallachia, the Ha Empire, the Golden Horde, and at the top, Armenikon, with its vast stretches of valuable productive land and its nearly endless armies, bolstered by their army of Lucifer, which would soon become a de facto part of the Armenikite army under their Basilius Sassinios II. Kral Robert declared his official rivals and was the first to do so, naming Germany, the Papal State, and the Golden Horde. He also named himself Defender of the Bogomilist Faith, and went to war with Orthodox Wallachia in order to bring them back into the fold. The Golden Horde, meanwhile, declared itself Defender of the Catholic Faith, pledging to take up any war to defend their fellow Catholics from heathen aggression, which did not bode well for Wallachia. Kral Robert sent a permanent diplomat to the court of Sosinios II in order to make friends of them, and hopefully an ally against their many enemies. Kral Robert died suddenly due to a hunting accident, leaving his young son Cosman Ben Leonard to inherit the throne, both a child and terribly unskilled ruler. Venice, fearing an impending invasion from Wallachia, forged an alliance with Germany. This did not deter Kral Cosman. He sent his general Franjo Adam to invade the only Venetian province of Durazzo with 13,000 men, calling Germany's bluff, counting on them being much too involved with their own affairs. 
He also had 33 ships blockade the port to prevent them from getting help from their partner in the trade league, Austria. Meanwhile, the Pope excommunicated King Gunther Blagai of Austria over disputes in the Alps. On the 6th of September of that year, Kral Kosman secured a royal marriage with Armenia Khan, bringing the two closer together. The Wallachian Admiral Valentin Yosef defeated the Venetians at sea in the Battle of the Sea of Marma. The war was won quickly after this, and their trade league collapsed as a result. Meanwhile, it seemed that they were on the brink of victory in their other war, too. They had taken their de facto capital of Birlad with 20,000 men, and conquered it with wanton cruelty. It fell in a matter of hours, and the Bogomila soldiers went from house to house, executing entire families, and burning down Orthodox churches with their worshippers still inside. It is thought that 100,000 people died that day in the immolation of the Synod. News of the massacre reached the court of Konstantrak at the same time as a message from the King of Orthodox Wallachia, Vlad Draculesti, requesting aid. Hearing of these many cruelties and worrying over the long border they shared with Wallachia, which was, in fact, the longest shared land border in Europe, Khan Satrak saw an opportunity for conquest against a kingdom fully embroiled in an ethnic conflict. As such, he ordered 50,000 of his horsemen down from the steppes with the goal of curtailing the growth of Wallachian power and hopefully rending the kingdom in two. When Orthodox Wallachia gained this unlikely co-belligerent in the form of the Golden Horde, they reversed the tide of war and brought the two Wallachias to a stalemate. Eventually, Targoviste was stormed by 30,000 Mongol horsemen, and Kral Kosman was forced to surrender. As such, Orthodox, hereon known as Lesser Wallachia, carved out a respectable territory on the shores of the Black Sea, sowing enmity between them and what they viewed as an imposter Wallachia. King Vlad Draculesti then began his domestic campaign of revenge, converting the peasantry in droves and impaling local religious leaders the Orthodox Patriarch deemed heretical. In a shocking move, the court chronicler, whose family had resided as the chroniclers of Greater Wallachia since the time of Katarik's Dragushin, fled to the court of Vlad II, leaving Kral Kosman to find a new scholar to record his history. This chronicle is of the original line, of the man who fled to a lesser Wallachia, which revived the spirit of Katarik's in his rulership, and tolerated not the heretics that had found such fertile ground in their homeland. So, these two Wallachias stood in enmity with one another. The multicultural, multi-religious kingdom of Greater Wallachia under Kral Kosman and his Bogomilus nobility, and the zealous, purest, lesser Wallachia undergoing a religious and ethnic cleansing under their king, Draculesti, reviving a potent legacy that had died with King German's acts of time. Vlad II declared himself defender of the Orthodox faith, which was an easy title to fill as the only independent Orthodox realm in the known world. In 1452, Lesser Wallachia began to improve its relations with Armenia Khan and Germany. In March of 1453, Missalian zealots rose up across the Khanate of the Golden Horde. On the 18th of November 1453, a sudden illness killed King Vlad Draculesti, leaving his son, Mircea, to inherit the throne. In 1459, Navarra fell into civil war, and later that year, Greater Wallachia invaded the Golden Horde, conquering further northern territories. On the 26th of October 1460, Lesser Wallachia was the first country in Europe to make use of the arquebus in their military, in order to make up for a lack of manpower. In December of that year, King Mircea curtailed noble privileges, weakening the boyars and their influence in his government. On the 1st of February, 1461, Lesser Wallachia declared war upon Greater Wallachia, calling in the Germans as allies to their war. Within two years, King Mircea was victorious over their new queen, Luminata Mavrocordatos, the start of their latest dynasty after Cosman died without any children. This war doubled the size of Lesser Wallachia, and the sheer administrative costs of such a thing made King Mircea pause the ethnic and religious cleansings that his father started until he had stabilized his rapidly growing realm. In fact, such a victory was very near fatal to the nascent realm, its bureaucrats and courtiers so few in number and novice in skill that it was barely able to administrate the kingdom, itself threatening to fall to pieces. In 1465, Milano was conquered by Burgo. In 1466, King Mircea put down Greater Wallachian revanchist rebels. On the 26th of April, 1468, Lesser Wallachia secured a royal marriage with Germany. In June of that year, they entered into an official alliance. 
In 1469, King Marseille began to pursue diplomatic ideas. In 1470, Lesser Wallachia entered into an official alliance with the Papal State as well. On the 15th of February, Pope Ioannis IV called King Marseille into a defensive war against King Strakvas of Greater Wallachia, who was in the midst of occupying northern Italy with the goal of annexing the Alps. King Marseille sent an army in each cardinal direction, each army numbering at 9,000 men. The war would end two years later with a victory for the Papal State and Lesser Wallachia, which now divided the northeastern and southwestern halves of Greater Wallachia. Because of the outcome of that war, Lesser Wallachia joined the ranks of the Great Powers, the lowest among them, with Greater Wallachia sitting at the sixth most powerful nation, which was now their official rival. In August, the Papal State broke their truce and invaded Greater Wallachia, seeking revenge. In June of 1472, the Papal State won its war of conquest against Greater Wallachia, taking the Western Balkans from them. Meanwhile, in Songhay, the native West African peasants had uniformly risen up in open revolt against their Catholic king, Arnefrid II, their dissatisfaction becoming a rather bloody affair. On the 17th of November, 1475, King Marseille constructed the City of All Romanians, which he named Bucharest, making it the new capital of Lesser Wallachia. On the 20th of January, 1479, Germany called Lesser Wallachia to war against Livonia in their conquest of Memel. King Mircea sent 12,000 men under Theodor Geica to invade from the south. In 1480, England named Lesser Wallachia as its rival. On the 9th of September, Germany won its war with Livonia and owed Lesser Wallachia seven favors. On the 18th of April, 1482, Lesser Wallachia declared war on Greater Wallachia in order to further shut off Greater Wallachia from the Black Sea. Kral Robert Hastings II called in his ally England, and King Mircea called Germany to arms. The Battle of Vine on the 26th of October saw a combined German Wallachian force of 25,000 men defeat the 25,000 soldiers of Greater Wallachia that were marching on Ostmark across the border in Germany. Meanwhile, Angloland blockaded the ports of Lesser Wallachia and the Black Sea with their considerable naval fleet, consisting of over 200 vessels. The Lesser Wallachian conquest of Plovdiv was won on the 20th of September, 1483, when the garrison of the Plovdiv castle succumbed to hunger and disease. Rather put off by Lesser Wallachia's seemingly constant wars of conquest, several trade posts along the Black Sea had expelled their merchants, namely in Opsikion. Meanwhile, far to the east, news reached the west that the Ashikaga clan of Japan rose to such prominence that it now counted among the great powers of the world, just below Lesser Wallachia. On the 7th of November, 1485, largely due to a dispute between Armenia Khan and Greater Wallachia over war debts, Armenia Khan guaranteed the independence of Lesser Wallachia. On the 18th of December, King Mircea began the formation of a centralized bureaucracy to help him in the administration of his growing realm in his older age of 57. On the 30th of June, 1486, the peasants in Armenia Khan rose up much like they had and were still doing in Sakhay, discontent at their place in the world. In 1487, Greater Wallachia declared war upon the Golden Horde, interested in the further conquest of lands in Poland and Ruthenia, which would shore up and validate their now rather detached holdings in the north, above Carpathia. In 1489, having resolved their dispute, Armenia Khan revoked their guarantee of Lesser Wallachia. In 1491, a province of Opsikion defected to Lesser Wallachia due to a severe famine that their prince refused to take action on. This also reopened trade in that region. On the 2nd of October, 1497, Queen Cosmina Basarab ascended to the throne, beginning the Basarabian dynasty. Her resolute nature and attention to detail would serve the nation well. Her first decree was to pursue a set of religious ideas, beginning with the establishment of Orthodox missionary schools.